Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Note Forge. So I've done quite a few casting videos on this channel, and for the most part, I've really just been using a hand torch or even the forge to heat up the metal in order to do some loss wax casting. But I've really been wanting to get into doing some larger castings with a few different kinds of metals, so I opted to pick up an electric melting furnace. Now I'm pretty new to these, but they're starting to get more and more popular, so there's a lot of different options to choose from online. And from what I understand, they're all pretty similar, at least in how they work. Uh, so I went with one that came pretty well recommended on eBay, made from Vevor, and I'll leave a link down in the description to where you can find it. Uh, it is an affiliate link if you want to help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. So for anyone who's new to these like me, I'm just going to do a quick unboxing to kind of show you what's included and how the entire thing is packaged. And then I'm going to do a quick little review on using this furnace for the first time. And uh, at least on eBay, they seem to come in a variety of different sets. Some come with just one crucible, others come with uh, multiple and maybe like a larger ingot mold. Um, but I decided to go with one that came with a few different sizes of graphite crucibles just because I plan on casting a few different kinds of metal and I don't want any kind of cross-contamination by just using the same one. And the first thing I wanted to mention is that this furnace seemed to be covered in a very fine dust, um, probably just from manufacturing. It's really not that big of a deal, but it will need to be cleaned off. So this kit came with a smaller one kilogram graphite crucible, a larger three kilogram crucible, a very small ingot mold, which to be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to get much use out of, a pair of tongs to take the crucibles in and out of the furnace. And you can see how they're kind of bent to shape inside these grooves of the crucibles. And they do a decent job of holding on to them, but I actually might end up forging a set of my own just to have something a little more secure. And one other thing that I wanted to mention really quick that seems to be pretty common for these style of furnaces is just how these crucibles kind of fit in. So with the larger three kilogram crucible, it's obviously a little bit more of a snug fit. But with the smaller one kilogram crucible, there seems to be quite a bit of play between the mouth of the furnace and the rim. So it's just going to be something to keep an eye on when I go to use the smaller crucible. And here's a quick peek inside just to kind of see what it looks like. And it looks like the thermocouple has some oxidation on it, so I'm pretty sure this went through a little bit of testing before it got shipped out. The thick leather gloves are also a pretty decent quality. And all in all, this kit cost me around 250 US dollars, which is a pretty decent price for these kind of furnaces. All right, so I got the melting furnace hooked up right next to the kiln. That way I'm not having to move too far when I'm going to do my castings. So the next thing I'm going to do is load up my crucible just to get things warmed up before I start my first test melt. And for my first test melt, I'm just going to try melting down some scrap bronze that I have laying around. These are just buttons and failed castings, but I thought it would be a good idea to melt these down and make some new casting grain. So to load up the crucible, I'm actually just going to tilt it on its side and try to gently slide in some of these buttons. Uh, a lot of them are actually pretty heavy, and if I were to just drop them straight in, I feel like the bottom would most likely bust out. And you can kind of see them down there. Now I'm ready to heat it up. Alright, so programming this is actually really straightforward. All you need to do is hit the U button to set your temperature. 
I'm going to set it to around 175 degrees Celsius, which is just under 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and hit P to set the temperature. And this top value is what the temperature actually is inside the furnace right now. So we'll just give this a little bit to climb up. And I'm just doing this little preheat because uh, we've actually had a lot of humidity these past few days and I haven't turned this on in a while. So I don't want any moisture inside to heat too quickly and cause any kind of problems. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to heat up and get rid of that extra moisture and then I'll bring it up to full melting temperature. And after just a little over 15 minutes, it has reached its temperature. Uh, it's going to probably go past until it shuts off and then balances back out. But for now, I'm just gonna let it rest and heat up for a little while longer before I bring it up to full temp. All right, so after shutting it off and leaving it to sit for a little over a half hour, I'm ready to turn it up to full temp and start melting down some bronze. So I'm going to set the temperature to 1025 degrees and I'm going to start a timer to see how long it takes to reach that temperature because that's going to be really important to know when I go to actually use this for casting. All right, so we finally reached casting temperature for the bronze scrap. And all in all, it took just a little over an hour to go from room temperature to 1025 degrees Celsius, uh, which really isn't too bad for a 1750 watt furnace. Now I'm just going to gently take the crucible out with the provided tongs and the thick leather gloves. And in one smooth motion, just pour the scrap into a pot of water making sure to totally miss and spill the last bit all over the place. Then I could just put the crucible back in and close the top to let it cool down by itself. Now other than the mishap with pouring, I'm still counting this first melt as a success and I'm sure I'll get a lot of use out of this kit for some future projects. All right, so it's been about a month since my first test melt, and I've used this furnace a few more times now, and I just wanted to mention a few more important things about it. And one is that this furnace is advertised to be used with gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. And everything that I've seen so far shows that it would work great for those applications. But it does have a max temperature of 1150 degrees Celsius, which is just over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're looking into this furnace for melting things like steel or iron, this is definitely not gonna be suited for you. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that the heating element on this furnace and the graphite crucibles are both consumables and will eventually need to be replaced. And how often they do need to be replaced really is dependent on what you're using it for. So if you're going to be using it for lower melting alloys like zinc or aluminum, your heating element is probably going to last a lot longer than if you were to constantly use it on things like copper that have a higher melting temperature. And speaking of, while you can run it at full temperature, they recommend that you don't run it for longer than three hours at a time to ensure that you don't burn out the heating element. And with that being said, after using mine quite a few times, it's still holding up just fine and I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of this in some future videos. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.